All right, folks, welcome back. And by the way, if you're watching on Facebook or live stream, you see a number on the screen that you can call and talk to us if you want to. We'd love to hear from you. This is going to be more of a, I pray, a relaxed blessing teaching because this, this is going to be something we need to meditate on once in a while. The first hour or longer was some pretty heavy stuff. That nation that forgets God's turned into hell, and he wasn't joking. And part of that hell is not necessarily flame and fire, obviously. But it's, it's the mental strain and the spiritual strain it can put on you to see these things. Am I telling mm -hmm. the truth? Yes. It's, it's a burden, Dick, on the heart of people that know the truth. <coughs> Nobody wants to hear it. Yeah, and you know anything you do about it. No, there's not. It's a spiritual so, hell. I, I, it's an it's a emotional torment. Mm -hmm. Hell will be an emotional torment also. Y'all realize that, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be thinking all the time you're there about all the times you had a chance to come to Christ and didn't. I ignored him and mocked him and scorned him. And you would give anything anything that you could ever had to have one more chance, wouldn't you? Yeah. Remember the, the, the story of the rich man died and went to hell? Yep. Mm -hmm. That was not a parable, folks. That's a true story. That's true. And he begged, he begged <coughs> uh, Abraham to send somebody back to tell his brothers about hell so he wouldn't go. He knew that they were coming with him. Now, folks, this is something to think about, please. Hell is a literal place. Yep. But right now in this nation, the Bible says this nation of God's turned into hell. For the righteous that know, for the right people that are trying to be righteous, none of them are righteous except Christ. But he and us trying to do what's right. It's hell to see this happening in the field. Mm -hmm. And you can't get people to understand why it's happening. Mm -hmm. But on top of all that, with all that being said, we are still here in America even. Some of the best people that ever walked the face of the earth. And I'll ask this question right up front. Anybody watching, anybody here in this room today, think they deserve one blessing? Let me know. <laughs> I don't even deserve his grace. No, we don't. It's a gift, thank mm -hmm. God. But I want you to stop and think back over your life. And, and think about how gracious he's been through us all of our lives. Even before we knew who he was. He let us live long enough to find out who he is. What if he would cut us off when we were still living in sin? These are things we sometimes don't think about that we need to be grateful for. He is a patient, long-suffering God, is he not? Yes. If he wasn't, we wouldn't be here right now. If Christ, when Christ hanging on the cross, all he had to do was think, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. He could have called 10,000 angels, right? Mm -hmm. And they would have rescued him, wouldn't they? And destroyed the earth. But then again, wouldn't he be breaking God's law? Oh, yeah. Well, he was going against his will anyway. Yes. So we need to be grateful, folks, before we even knew Christ, that he preserved us long enough to bring us to him. How I many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. I remember when I first met Phil Hudock a long time ago. Back in the price, she was still pop. You mean a dinosaur age? How long has it been, Phil? 20 some years at least. Well, let's see. 25. 25? Was, was born. She's how old is she? 27. That's about 27, isn't she? About 27, 27 years, maybe. 27. Close to it. I said 25 or 27. I remember, and I'll tell the story again. I love telling it up in Dick's front room one day. Phil was there visiting. And something about Phil I liked for the first time I met him. Really, really, seriously, he just kind of got out there and he's like a brother to me and Dick right now. He knows that. But I asked him about his soul. If he knew where he'd go if he died, he said, no, I really don't. He's honest. I said, would you like to know? He said, yes, I would. He accepted Christ right there in the front room that day. Mm -hmm. Then he did. Wow. <laughs> and he ain't looked back. He's, he picked up the sword and the cross and his helmet and went into battle and he hadn't looked back. This man had been through a lot of crap, and I'm saying crap mm -hmm. for the world put on him, trying to stop him from doing it, from witnessing as his Christian faith for a long time, have they not? Mm -hmm. But you told me one time, you said, Pastor Butch, I didn't know what this battle was about until I saw the spiritual side of it. That's right, they didn't all, they didn't all come together. There's a piece missing, big piece, yeah. the most important piece. Yeah. Unless you can see the spiritual side, None of it makes any sense. 
you see man versus man. You don't, you don't see the spiritual side of it. So to know he come to Christ, I got to meet his family, we can meet Lynn and watch his daughters grow up from diapers to womanhood. It's been a blessed time, hasn't it? Amen. It flew by too. <laughs> it did. No so I want to read a verse to you in Psalms 22 to start with. <clears throat> now I want you to think with me as you meditate on this and understand what this is saying to us. We all, <clears throat> we can, and sometimes we get wrapped up in what's happening. And I will say this to you as we move on. Don't let what's happening steal you the joy of your salvation. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's easily done. If you become too angry and full of hatred in a wrong way, it'll destroy your joy. It'll destroy your testimony. We can't do that. It'll eat you out inside and out. It will. We have to keep our eyes on Christ and His grace and mercy. In Psalms 22, verse 3, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. That's us. He inhabits the praise of his people. There may be times when our lip is not singing praise, but our heart should always be joyous in him. Amen? Yes. I don't care. Listen, <clears throat> folks, I'm, I'm only a man, and I haven't been through really hard trials yet to speak of. But whenever you've been hit a little bit, we have two choices. Whine and complain or praise him for his mercy. Amen. Romans 8, 28 promises for our own good, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So why are we whining? So, but he said, I inhabit your praises. Where there is praise, I'll be there with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I, how many times do we forget that and we, I'm, I'm guilty, murmuring and complaining of the dumbest stuff. Anybody decide to ever do that? Yeah. <laughs> you ever have days or anything you touch falls to pieces? Jim. <clears throat> You know, next thing you know, you're getting mad. Yep. Well, if I couldn't complain about the dumbest stuff, then I'm not getting pinched in the right spot. You see, when I was still alive. <laughs> but you need to remember, I've had worse things happen in my life. Can't go on. Well, you know, I tell people that when I minister to people when I'm doing deliverances, I always say to them, make your misery your ministry. And it's, well, I never looked at it that way. Yep. So, you know, I've, I've got a couple of people that are doing that right now. They just make their ministry, their mi I mean, it's their misery, their ministry. Well, you ever stop and think that what you're going through may bless somebody later on, you help them, mm -hmm. help them through these yeah. things? And again, none of us in here have went through things that a lot of people have. Obviously, we haven't been bartered for the cause of Christ yet. No one here went to jail because they're staying yet. Yet. But it's coming. Yeah. Let's go to Psalms 100. this chapter and we'll, we'll read to you about the Thanksgiving Christian holiday. Verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, all societies, all nations, praise God. Yep. Some of us feel that a little bit over that year, mm -hmm. years, haven't we? Serve the Lord with gladness. But how about when people are laughing at me or mocking me or ridiculing me or calling me trouble or making me lose a job? So does it still serve with gladness? When yep. Christ went to the garden, he prayed, Father, I don't want to do this, but you will be done. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just, he's a man, wasn't he? Yeah. He didn't want to die. Not, not that way. No. Mm -hmm. He said, but serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now listen to this next quote. This is important. Anytime you go to prayer, remember this verse. This is important. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving Amen. And, to his and his courts with praise. When you go to prayer, don't come in and say, Oh God, help me. Father, thank you for the thank blessings you. of this day. Absolutely. Thank you for loving me through all my faults and failures. And of course, I know most of us don't have any faults and failures, do we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for loving me through my faults and failures and my weaknesses and my inadequacies and just being a mortal man. Thank you for loving me and saving my soul against all odds that Satan tried to destroy me. You saved my soul. That's right. That's how you're in the pray. In the praise him before you even ask anything or petition him. Praise him. He inhabits the praise his people, Phil. I'll, I always, by the grace, his grace, when I pray, I want to praise him first. Because here I am. 
An unworthy man, born again by the blood, of, by the Spirit of Christ, and washed by His blood. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't I praise Him? I mean, really, why can't I praise Him? Laying in the hospital bed in Morgantown, ain't no place worse than the hospital to pass time. No doubt. Okay, but later meditate on His goodness and mercy, truly, and thank Him for the blessings I was I was being taken care of. He blessed me with that. He's, he gave me help to come through this and, and really come through by his <coughs> the flying collar, so to speak. He's been good to me. Why would I murmur? Yes, Phil. And, and he's got a plan. Yes, he does. So he's working the plan. You don't have to doubt it. Nope. You know it's there. Through persecution, he makes us better people. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about persecution of other people. And through his will sometimes, things happen that we don't understand, no, maybe not even like. But it's for our own good. It That's, truly is. Isn't it refuge from the storm then? Of course it is. Yeah. And we go through the storm. And I know I prayed about this every day, asking God to watch over the Redmond Saints in all the world countries. Because North Korea, if you're a Christian there, you sign your own death sentence. Same in the Middle East with some of the nations there, you sign your own death sentence. But they go forward anyways. They know that walking in Jesus Christ yep. with joy they have salvation, and it's a gift. And they know that they can be killed any day for believing in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But doesn't that prove to us that Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Son, truly does exist? And opposition will make you stronger. If yes. You faith. It will. When I was in the military, one of the first things to do is got there, put you through an obstacle course. Obstacle course is tough the first time you do it. After about the 10th time, it's nothing. You work your way up to it and can handle it. And that's what opposition does here. Right. Unless you have opposing force on you, you lose your muscle mass, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's what opposition can do to you. It makes you stronger. Build your faith. And I said before God to his glory, let all hell assail us, and by his grace and mercy we will not deny him, and one day be with him forever. Now, what do you get to lose? Yeah. It, says, it says on right here, be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You'll not hide from his truth. And one day, whether you believe or not, one day you're going to confess that he is God and he is Lord. Is that not true? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse yep, 5. There you go. And you're going to stand before him and confess who he says he is. So his truth will go on even if you don't believe it. Now, I want, Thanksgiving is a holiday that I really enjoy celebrating. I don't do much for Christmas nope. or Easter because I know what it is. I'm not saying that to be nasty. I did it for years. I'm not throwing stones. I'm really not. But I, Thanksgiving is a day I look forward to. I sent it home last night in a nice warm home. Mm -hmm. Marcia just made a roast. Big beef roast with potatoes and onions and carrots. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there eating that thinking, what did I do to deserve this goodness? Barsha's not feeling well, but she's still been a faithful helpmate for almost 47 years. Next Tuesday's 47 years, Phil. There ain't no parole. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no parole. But it, I think about these things, I think about it a lot. I know me real well. I know what I deserve. His grace is about to keep me in there. But let's look at this, let's look at this little writing here about Thanksgiving. I want you to listen to this, because this is important. It's Thanksgiving, it's Thanksgiving Day, a Christian holiday. Yes, Thanksgiving is, is historically a Christian holiday, though like many holidays, it also developed many secular expressions. It originally goes back to the time of the early Puritan colonies that came to America from England, though not precisely in the way that we often think. Now, I'll ask you a question. What were the Puritans <coughs> and Pilgrims fleeing from when they come over here? Persecution. Persecution. Mm -hmm. Out of that persecution, we got America. Yes. Wow. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. We normally think of the first Thanksgiving as a harvest celebration shared between the Plymouth Pilgrims and their Native American neighbors in the fall of 1671, that this is not actually where the holiday came from. While there, while there really was such a celebration that year, it was a minor event in the colony's history that was not uh, comm commemorated or even much remembered. In fact, the only, fir the fir the only first hand account that exists is one small paragraph. Our harvest began uh, beg being gotten in our governor sent four, four men on fowling. That's hunting ducks, whatever. That we may 
that we might after a more spatial manner rejoice together after we had gathered the fruit of our labors. They four in one day killed as much fowl with as little help out besides served the company almost a week. That's a lot of, lot of birds. Mm -hmm. At which time amongst our, our, rec our recreations we, ex we exercised our arms, I mean the target practice. Many of the Indians came among, came among us, amongst us, among the rest, their, uh, among the, the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some ninety men, who were for three days we entertained and feasted, and they went out and killed five deer, which he brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others. The, the pilgrims spoke here; they did not declare war on the Indians as, as they did in Jamestown. Mm -hmm. They tried to live with them peacefully and witness to them. The celebration probably took place in, in, in the late September or the October rather than our traditional November dating. The truth is, however, that most of the pilgrims never even mentioned the event. It seems to have been entirely forgotten until the above paragraph was recovered in 1841 when, when a Unitarian minister in New England published a collection of writings from the Plymouth pilgrims w w with his own explanatory notes. In these notes, he speculated that the paragraph described the first Thanksgiving. This began, uh, began a process that uh, over decades to come would eventually lead to the, uh, the uh, association between the uh, particular pilgrim harvest celebration and the Thanksgiving holiday, an association entirely unknown before that time. Yet the practice of Thanksgiving holidays did not already exist as it did at a moment time. Yet the practice of Thanksgiving holidays did already exist, and it does go back to the pilgrims and other Puritan uh, Christian settlers of those early days. Ironically, these Puritans did not believe in creating annual holidays and did not celebrate Christmas or Easter. Oh, they must be heathens. Mm. No doubt. They did, however, call for providential holy days. These days were not regular annual events. They were spatial days called by ministers or magistrates. Did you hear that? They were called by ministers or magistrates. Government officials. Exactly. Yeah. In response to immediate circumstances, in times of trial and difficulty, or or to seek God's guidance regarding difficult situation decision, they would they would call for days of fasting and humiliation. Now you all listen to this. The government the governors would ask for please pray yeah. for a situation. We get an Early answer. presidents did that too. Yeah, they did. In times of great blessing or spatial and favorable circumstances, they would call for special days of thanksgiving to express their gratitude to God. The harvest uh, festival we typically think of as the first Thanksgiving was not, in the pilgrim's mind, actually a Thanksgiving ho holiday. This does not mean that it was a secular event, since as one historian notes, listen, this is what this said. This is beautiful. From the pilgrim's perspective, now listen to this. No occasion, no occasion was ever purely secular. To rejoice was to rejoice in the Lord. To be thankful was to celebrate the kindness of God. No occasion was purely secular. God was in everything. Yes. What we call secular is only what we do to glorify God. If you work at a job, since you've been doing it to glorify God, You're right? right. You should everything was. There's no secular. It's all. It's all. It's all Christian. It was faith. Everything they did was to glorify God. Have we lost that? Mm -hmm. That's trying to stay pure. It is. It was not, however, a formal holy day of thanks. The first true day of Thanksgiving, celebrated at Plymouth, colony came two years later. After a long drought in 1623 that threatened the colony's very, colony's very survival, they called for a solemn day of humiliation to seek the Lord by a humble and fervent prayer in this great distress. By the next morning, it began to rain and continued raining for 14 days. Overjoyed at this kind providence of God, they called for a day of Thanksgiving and prayer and praise to God. This was, in fact, the first Thanksgiving celebrated on American soil. Even this, however, was not made an annual holiday. It was an expression of the broader Puritan tradition of provincial holy days. This tradition began uh, becoming ingrained in New England culture and found a place in the latter birth of the new, new American nation, as one writer explains. And by 1691, the year Plymouth was absorbed into Massachusetts Bay, they adopted a pattern of annual springtime fast days and autumn, autumn Thanksgiving. That's kind of in line with what the Israelites did, is it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. While the custom of springtime fast never caught on elsewhere, the celebration of regular autumn Thanksgiving spread across New England during the 18th century, expanded to the old northeast, northwest after the War of 1812, and began to uh, invade the Upper South by the 1840s. Thanksgiving was b becoming a beloved American holiday. Now, they had fasting in the spring. Why do you think they fasted and feasted in the fall? Why would they do that? 
That's so not much food in the spring. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, they were they have crops growing. Yeah, they were praying for a good crop. Here yeah. We go. yeah, fasting, seeking God. seek God's will. You know, fasting is a lost art. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yep, yep. I was just thinking, fourteen days of rain. That sounds like West Virginia. <laughs> oh no, we've had we've had fourteen months. Anyway. We've had we've had that much in months now, thank you. Think so. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, I'm amazed that the Bible, well, Christ told the disciples, said, if you're going to do these things, you got to fast. Mm-hmm. Well, the Day of Atonement was in the fall. Yeah, that was in September, September or something. Uh, September. So it's the long yeah. of tabernacles or anything else. Yeah, end of September, beginning of October, to- atonement and tabernacles. So the, the yep. pilgrims and Puritans yeah. had a basic idea, you know, of when they do these things according to Scripture. Mm-hmm. Americans, Americans did attribute their Thanksgiving tradition to New England Puritans, but they didn't think of it as a memorial of any particular historical event. Instead, it was a celebration of their present thanks to, for God's blessings here and now, often mixed with a repentance of present sins. Oh my, have we forgotten that. We've forgotten that. The first call for all Americans to share in one day of Thanksgiving came during the Revolutionary War. Henry, uh, Henry Lawrence, then president of the Continental Congress, issued a four proclamation on November 1st, 1777. It is therefore recommended to the legislature, all, really? To or executive powers of these United States. They recommended to the government that you do this? Bill, what happened? I mean, Obama put the rainbow on the White House to show that homosexuals are okay. They, they bring up a, a 50, 60 foot tall, tall Christmas tree, put it in a place and, and mm-hmm. call it holy. And, no, and the Clintons yeah. decorated with, go ahead. Yeah, they decorated, used condoms to decorate they did. the White House Christmas tree. They did. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But this was not what oh, America wow. started as. America really did start as a Christian nation. They held church. In the White House. They did. Were these people perfect? Of course not. Then they knew it. That's why they repented of their sins. Yep. Mankind's nature is a sin, is it not? Yes. Yep. The sad thing about it feels good. And even at our best, we mess up. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it is therefore recommended to the legislature, legislative or executive powers of the United States to set apart Thursday, the 18th day of December next, for solemn thanksgiving and praise. That at one time, and with one voice, the good people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and consecrate themselves to the service of their, of their divine benefactor, and that together with their sincere acknowledgments and offerings, they may join the penitent, penitent confession of their manifold sins, whereby they had forfeited every favor, and their humble and earnest supplication that it may please God through the merits of Jesus Christ, mercifully to forgive and blot them out of remembrance. <laughs> Wow. Yes, Phil. By the way, when they realized that they had messed up because they founded the colony on collectivism, they went back to Scripture and said, no, we're doing something wrong. And they mm-hmm. found out that, that, that uh, Scripture is for charity but not forced collectivism. Exactly. Right. They tried communism first, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They tried. They were. Didn't they lazy? But they about start death, literally. They did start. A lot of them did start death. But I, I, as I read this proclamation, November 1st, 1777, and, and people will tell you that so-called leaders and white people, well, we never were a Christian nation. I beg to differ. Mm-hmm. We were a Christian nation. Mm-hmm. And you, you know that is wonderful and that's great, but you know what makes us more accountable for sin? We had it. Yeah, we had lost it. Yeah. We had it. We had the heritage, Lynn. We had his word, and we turned our back on him. God help us and please forgive us, please. That's why we're so thankful, Father, that you blessed us even through all these sins. Yeah, we were given the law first. We were. They did not establish a permanent annual holiday. In keeping with the Puritan practice, this was called for an one for for as a one time event in response to God's providential hand at that moment. Still the Continental Congress proceeded to call for similar days. Now listen to this. The Congress called for similar days. What if Congress said today we're going to have a day of fasting and prayer to Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ? <laughs> in the Supreme Court in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. ACL, yeah. you. <laughs> or uh, Southern Poverty. Yeah. You know, this re- makes me rejoice, but makes me want to cry at the same time. I'm 70 years old, Steve, and this makes me angry that we lost this. Mm-hmm. 
Still, the Continental Congress proceeded to call for similar days of Thanksgiving nearly every year throughout the rest of the war. It was not on the same day each year, but it set an early precedent for the, for the idea of a nationwide pausing, a nationwide pausing for Thanksgiving to God, coupled with repentance of sins. When's the last time you heard anybody calling for repentance of sins? <laughs> Even in churches today. We just need more laws, Butch. That's what it is. <laughs> Not surprisingly, George Washington continued this tradition during his presidency with proclamations like, Now therefore I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th of November, next to be the, the, the vote to the, by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the benefactor, beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that shall be. Though we may then all unite in rendering to him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country. You know, that's been a couple yeah. hundred years ago. You know, 250, I mean, that hasn't been... When you think about 100 years, it's making a long time, but I'm 70 years old. I'm well over halfway to 100 years myself. So 100 years is not very long, is it? It isn't. Well, if you no. think of... Uh, that's, that's three lifetimes, so 300 years, roughly, or uh, 250 years. Well, if you think of 60 people living 100 years, how much does that add up to? 6,000. 6,000. Yeah. So you think about this, folks. It's not been a long time ago, but in a short period of time, how much, how much feel in our in the last twenty years in your in your knowledge, how much has this nation changed? It's one hundred eighty degrees. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's good is evil, and what was evil now is good. Yeah. And Lynn, looking back in your life, and you're younger than anybody in here, basically, what has changed in your lifetime that you see from when you were a, little, a young lady to now? quite a bit, but you can't say that it's changed in my lifetime, because I'm still thanking God for Thanksgiving. And oh, yeah, absolutely, but, but I'm saying, but do, do you see it? We are. Do you see it falling away, though, in your lifetime? With other people. Yes, that's right? what, that, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We, this nation used to give God praise, and he blessed us with a, with a society that prospered and grew. Mm -hmm. We forgot him longer than our lifetime, but a lifetime. And now we're in this in this mess today, but we still got to thank him because we're still alive to be to do his will. Mm -hmm. We got a place to sleep tonight. We got food mm -hmm. on the table. We have health to be here. We have family that, that loves us and are, and are Christians. <coughs> a lot of them. Well, we you know we have no reason to complain, but to watch how it changed in my lifetime lets me know that somebody failed. Mm -hmm. Now it goes on to say. Though that none of these proclamations tied the day back to any particular historical event, it was not meant to memorialize a festival that the pilgrims once held. It was, it was, however, following their practice of pausing to thank God at various times when we had done, uh, we, we, when he had done particular good. There was still no set day in, in 1795. Washington didn't schedule a day of Thanksgiving for February 19th. And while it had become popular to do so, there was no insistence that such a day be scheduled every year, single year. In fact, wrote John Adams, uh, while John Adams would, would schedule several days of fasting and, and humiliation, he scheduled none for Thanksgiving. Thomas Jefferson would reschedule no, no such holy days at all. Governors of individual states, however, continue to call for their own Thanksgiving days in accordance with their wise and Christian usage at a time-honored and, and pious tradition as, as a long-established custom but it was not always a national practice. It was until 1863 that there was began to be an unbroken chain of national days of Thanksgiving. Now, even when Jefferson, by the way, was shady to be, we'll say a Christian, mm -hmm. meh, maybe. But he didn't he didn't declare any days of prayer asking humiliation. I'll tell you something about what kind of man he was. But the states went ahead and did anyway, knowing that God Almighty blesses us. And his blessings are what, what we're looking for, are, are without re reservation for those who love him, even though they're imperfect people. Yeah. Is that true? Mm -hmm. The year that is drawing it toward its close has been filled, this is what uh, Lincoln said this, the year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties which are so, so const constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, Others have been added which are of so extraordinary nature that they, can, they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensitive to the, to, to the, to the ever watchful promise of Almighty God. And now we're guilty of that. How many of us take stuff for granted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> we don't, we some, sometimes people we don't, we don't think about. We get in the car and drive down a warm car to go to work or wherever. <coughs> wake up the warm bed to get to a, a breakfast and, and a day of, of having clothes on your back. And, and we take that for granted, don't we? Just have your hot water heater break down. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there it's you a big week to repair the floor and get it going again. I mean, we are so blessed. I'm talking about material things now, even. Yep. Even the clothes on your back. Everything. We have no reason to complain. I know we messed mm -hmm. up this country. I know that people. We, we, I said we, the nations messed itself up. But we're here to glorify him, spread his word, expose <laughs> evil, and rejoice in his presence all the time. Our lives are like vapors are flying by. We can't waste it, murmuring and complaining. We should expose evil and enjoy your day. Take a step for what's right. If you have to take a whip to the money changers, then do it. Rejoice in God's presence. Do you know that he's with you if you're in jail? Are you in the hospital? Sure. You, sure. He's with you, is he not? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. he, so, was, he was with the Apostle Paul when he was in jail. Yes, he was. He wrote most of the epistles from there. Lincoln said, no human counsel hath devised nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who while dealing with us in, in his anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as, as, as with one heart and with one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at, at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a as of a day of thanksgiving and praise to our benef beneficent Father, the beneficent Father who dwelleth uh, dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the the inscriptions justly due to Him, for such singular, singular deliverances and blessings they do also with humble penitence, penitence for our national per, 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 perverseness. For our, now he, he said he said even back then America was perverse. National perverseness and disobedience command to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the in, in lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged. I mean, he's trying to make a point that God is still in charge. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I don't understand all these things. I don't understand, what, I don't understand everything that happens. I don't. But I don't have to understand it. No. Nope. I don't have to. I just have faith my Father does. What are you thinking, Bill? It's where faith comes in. It is. It truly is. And so we have to understand that American people at one time, at one time this nation as a whole, did pause to thank you. This coming Thursday is a, the day that he said last Thursday yeah. of the month, right? Mm -hmm. Which isn't quite last Thursday this year, but it's close enough. You know. Thanksgiving. That we need, seriously, when you're with your family, whether it's just one you, two of you, ten of you, at least for a few seconds when you pray, remember who he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, most people think, thank God, it's Thanksgiving, but gee, tomorrow's Black Friday. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, we and the ball game need to thank God that the other people who are saying, wow, it's a Christian holiday, we need to take that away, haven't done that. They haven't uh, done that. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's because it's... It, and the sad part of Bob is Halloween has surpassed this for yes. popularity. Yes. Okay. In fact, that doesn't matter. We don't get off for that Halloween. No, we don't. So we'll be dead. And the economics of Halloween <laughs> is almost either. surpassing Christmas. It is. It really is. Mm -hmm. See, it's strange that the peg of the holidays, and the Halloween being the worst, is growing and passing the Christian holiday. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm not about spending money for this. I'm not saying buying things for Thanksgiving, but, they, but the popularity of this is Halloween more popular. And that's really sad. America people should rejoice in the fact that God blessed us. Mm -hmm. well, it's like July 4th. How many people really know what July 4th is really all about? They don't. The context was still thanksgiving to God mixed with repentance offered up because of recent, recent events. In fact, if one, simply, if, 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 if one simply reviews the thanksgiving proclamations of U.S. presidents for the rest of the 19th century afterward, one finds biblical uh, allusions and regular calls together at churches for corporate worship. It was still not a memorial of a historic event, and there was no reference to the pilgrims, but it, is, it was explicitly a religious holiday. Thanksgiving was understood to be God-focused. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not football-focused, shouldn't be. No. Or Black Friday-focused. Or beer drinking. It was drinking. for God-focused. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was the living out of an old Christian tradition. 
though not the regulation, uh, regulation of a specific Christian event. Certainly by this time, there were already secular expressions of the holiday emerging, but any study of the th history of Thanksgiving Day makes it, it abundantly clear that it was birthed and grew to maturity as an explicitly Christian idea. Mm -hmm. And this historical Christian notion is rooted in the biblical principle, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yep. Wow. It makes, it makes tears come to the eyes. He's been so good yeah. to us. That's why we give gifts to each other on Thanksgiving because we don't do the Christmas thing. We don't do yeah. the pagan holidays. But it's, a, it's our way of saying thank you to each other. Absolutely. Right. Do you, do you know how blessed we are here to be here this morning? I mean, there's only a few of us here. And some are watching. But do you know how blessed we are to have this fellowship right here? Do you know I can call Steve up there and you help Steve be there, wouldn't you, Steve? Yep. And I know Phil would and Dick would and everybody else here would and vice versa. Right. But that's back, that, back up a hundred years. We wouldn't be all be here. No, we wouldn't. No, you first here. travel. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. get here. You're right. We couldn't get here. Exactly. So it's here at We are so blessed. Obviously today, many celebrate Thanksgiving really as a family day or as a, in the name of some vague civic religion. The Thanksgiving holiday was, however, unquestionably forged as a day of special thanks to the Christian God, whose ever-present mercies. It is certainly not a mandatory Christian holiday. But if you are a Christian who celebrates the day, be sure that you celebrate it in honor and gratitude to God. If you are a Christian who does not celebrate it, nevertheless be sure to Paul regularly to give special thanks to God. Whether with holidays or without, a heart of thanksgiving ought to define a Christian. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. That's Amen. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's an, an attitude of praise is what we should have. And I, and I feel sometimes that, I mean, I do. Could I have that copy? Yeah. Sometimes, okay. being a mere mortal, and I try so hard not to do this, I get frustrated. I know you ought to do that, right. but I do. I don't. I get. I don't get frustrated. I get aggravated. <laughs> okay. Well, and frustrated. Pretty much and, so. and and I try always, and, and I say this in many times to folks at the council, and I got to say to myself too many times. Whatever the day brings, praise God. It's yeah. his, if you're a Christian, that's His will for you that day. Sorry. Let Him show you how to get through it, whether it's good or bad, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And. There are times when I get frustrated because <coughs> I, I can't do anything right, nothing. But that's a day that he's worked in my life for a purpose. I need to search out that purpose field and let him work on it. So as you go out into the world this next coming week and go to Thanksgiving with your family, whether anybody else does or not, you remember Thanksgiving and who it belongs to. Yep. Don't, if your family's watching football, they don't care about anything with the turkey, that's fine. He's talking to you mm -hmm. and you and you. And you'd be a witness. You'd be a witness to who he is. You know, and sometimes you don't even say a word. It's your demeanor, mm -hmm. your character. It's the love that you show people. And strangers, strangers will respond to that love. Yeah. It's like I'm a serious. Yeah. Well, if you let your sign a witness becomes strong as thunder, but the strangers are not Christians recognize it more than a Christian will. Mm -hmm. I am amazed and I saw all the glory of my father in heaven but I go to a restaurant and, and, and a waiter comes a waitress comes to the table how you doing today? how long you worked here? And I just ask questions and I'm telling you many many times before I leave there they're telling me the whole life story mm -hmm. I've had people fight me going in the store and they say good morning I'll stop and talk to them well, yes good morning yes. how are you today and said you know a lot of people you say that too they just know the nose and walk out yep they do the love of Christ should shine through us in all situations yes and sometimes that love can come through as anger against something wicked but that would always be pure love it's like right? it's like me working in the hotel sure people come down from the rooms for breakfast the first thing that comes out of my mouth is good morning sure and they might be in a real bad mood, but after you say that, they change. They lighten up. They do. They, they do. lighten the up. The face lightens up even. But see, that's what a Christian's supposed to be. Yeah. We should be grateful all the time, Phil, 24-7. That doesn't mean everything's pleasant. Paul was being whipped outside the city gates and stoned outside the city gates. I don't think he was there, oh, that feels good, let's do it again. <laughs> but he still let Christ work through him. Yes, Phil. 
You want to say something? Yeah, I was. How'd you know? <laughs> I can read my <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, having taught school for 40, I don't know, 45 years, something like that. <clears throat> and survived it. And, so, and yes, so far. Um, <laughs> You know, the students are given a false sense of worth when, when there's no God and, you know, you're, uh, you're just uh, a product of evolution. You really have no worth. And it's sad that they don't, that they have such a, they actually have such a low or false self-esteem, okay? Poor. And you know, when I finally got my head screwed on pretty much straight and I started realizing that and telling them, you know, especially teaching uh, life science, biology, where you talk about reproduction and everything. Of course, the state treats it like a recipe for a cookbook, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But when you tell them that, that God didn't make any junk and he didn't start with them, you know, I mean, they can carry that throughout their lives. And I don't care if they're digging a ditch. It's like my dad, my mom said my dad could dig the most beautiful ditch you ever saw. <laughs> well, you know, if you're a child of God and God didn't make any junk, then we're not supposed to, we're supposed to have pride in everything we do, not really for ourselves, mm -hmm. but, you know, you'll practice that. And sure. your, your world is quite different. It's not secular to you. It's, it's, it's sacred that you're doing that ditch, right? Oh, right, right. And you can enjoy what is otherwise not enjoyable. Mundane, maybe. Yeah. The Bible says, whatever you find do, do it with all your might. Or it says, it says your might, but all your might is what I had to do it. So I don't care about this. And yeah, there's some jobs I've done. Used to pack sewer pumps into some real water department with sewers up my waist and up my elbows. Oh. But, you know, it's what I had to do. And I had a job. And I was feeding my family. Why should I murmur? Mm -hmm. That's before I was a real, real mature Christian. But I was thankful that I took a paycheck home to feed my three sons. Yeah. It wasn't always pleasant, but we haven't seen anything unpleasant really ourselves. But whatever you have hand find it to do, do it with all you might. You, if, if you're a, you're blessed to be a to be a, a homemaker, and you're making the bed, glorify God while you do it. Same praise is while you do it. If you're washing the dishes, thank God you got dirty dishes. Oh, look hey, man. Uh, he doesn't get to do it. Huh? <laughs> well, I look do what? To I work on stuff that's really complicated, and I really have problems trying to figure it out and put it together, whatever. I get it done at work, I'm, and I say out loud, thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, 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 I, I know that many times got big to work in the morning, snowing and blowing and cold, and I really stay in bed. Yeah. But I had a place to go and something to do. Mm -hmm. I had a home to come back to. I had a wife that actually loved me. A dog that likes me. So why, why should I complain? What am I going to murmur about, okay? The roads are maybe a little nasty, but I'm out there, and so help me, this is always a blessing. As customers, I haven't, I've been out, basically out of sales for several years now. I still keep a couple of customers. If I run into a customer, they wouldn't come back to work. They miss me. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. And I say, I, I, well, I appreciate it, but you live too far away. I don't want to drive that far anymore. But I had one on call me last night. Uh, you sell to. He called just say hi. Wow. Yeah. Bobby, he worked at Hicks Market for years. Ernie, er, Ernie, Ernie. Ernie. Bob, yeah. I mean, he called just say hi. I mean, these are blessings. Not that I did, I'm good, but Christ was in me and I was able to bless those people somehow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So I had no reason to complain, Steve, do you? No. Anybody want to say anything? We got a few minutes left. You might get the phone number out if somebody wants to call. Anybody wants to call and share your testimony? I don't have time to feel what is it? 304 591 6993. 304 591 6993. You want to call and share something? Do it. We got about 15 minutes left. I'd love to hear from you. Call right now. Make the phones light up. 304 591 6993. Love to hear from you. But we are definitely a blessed nation. Even though we've forgotten God as a whole, his people that are here are blessed. And I'm going to say this too, because there's still some righteous people left, even the heathen's blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. The only thing stops you judging so far is the people are still left. Yeah, as long as you're still alive. Yep. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, November 22nd is kind of special because that's, that was my dad's birthday. And that was the day JFK got assassinated. That's right. November yeah. 22nd. That's right. right. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was in class in Tigers Valley High School when that happened. 
It was a beautiful day. I, do you remember yep. it was a I remember, sunny yes, brown day? Yeah, my, cool day was cool that day. My father's birthday, because he's a, he's a leap year baby, it was always Thanksgiving on the 25th, which is on the leap year. He's, that's when he was... When he born? Yes. Mm-hmm. He always lied about his age, though. My phone's not ringing. Well, only, only a year older than four years. <laughs> That's true. Any more comments about anything at all? You know, I was just thinking of what you said. You know, I've done a lot of drywall work, drywall finishing. I walk into a house, somebody's already pre-hung the sheetrock, and I look at it and say, yuck. I see all these seams that need to be taped in. I see all these joints, butt joints that need to be really feathered out wide to keep them um, looking smooth. But you know, when I finally get done with it and I look back at it and I step away from it, and after it's been painted, I said, wow, it looks good. Yeah. You know, Christ is the same way. You know, good point. Look, June's like, what a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I looked at the mirror yeah. this morning and I cracked it. What a mess. <laughs> yep. I oh, cracked the mirror this morning when I looked at it, but you know, it's, it, it dawns on me that that was a joy to take something from yuck to something that's like, wow. Amen. And that was a oh, good joy. There's a phone. Right, let's take a phone call here. Hello? Hello? Howdy. Howdy. Who we got? There's something going on with the phone. I have a pretty bad connection. Okay, can you hear me now, Mike? I recognize you. Can you hear me okay? I couldn't understand a word of that. Oh, my. I want to. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you just fine. Okay. I just wanted to call and tell you, Pastor, that I really appreciate it. Uh, Church today has been a blessing to me, and thank you, Phil, for uh, all you do to bring it to us. And uh, I was eating lunch today. And they got my order wrong, but buddy, it didn't bother me a bit. All, all I can pretty much think about now when I eat is those people in Yemen and places like that, Africa and the Ebola, and I know where it's coming from. And, and we are really blessed here, and we need to we need to remember that. Also, I see it. I see what's coming, and our destruction is going to come on us in the blink of an eye. Amen. I wish people would repent, but I, I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Um, you're showing it to them if, if they'll open up their eyes and see it. Uh, thank you, Mike. I love you, buddy. Thank you, Butch. All righty. Much. Bye bye. That is another call coming in. What was that? No, I think that was a call coming into his phone. It's where Mike. Oh, oh yeah. it was a beep beep. All on right, his we're end. gonna get another two minutes. You want to call? The lines open. Three oh four. Five nine one six nine nine three. It's on my phone. Three oh four five nine one six nine nine three. Good memory. Two minutes. Come on, we want to hear from you. If you're out there watching today, we want to hear from you. I mean that. If you're part of the family, why not come and talk to us a minute? Because we are truly blessed. We really are. I mean, I don't want the, us to say this. Oh, this said we just need to praise God. Let's let's close in prayer right now on the camera. We'll close just to sing in prayer right now. Would you only stand up and join hands after we're done? We're going to close in prayer on Tuesday today. And I wonder if I could ask everybody in here to take turns saying a prayer. Mm. Would that be possible? Yeah. yeah. I'll lead off. Then we'll go around to the right. Kelly, you're next, okay? All right. Father, we come before you this day once again with pure praise as much as possible in these, in these hearts we have. We thank you for your blessings. Oh, we praise you, Lord God, for your mercy. And most of all, Father, we thank you for the saving grace of our Savior and the blood that was shed on Calvary to cleanse us from our sins. Thank you for the giving us the Holy Spirit that teaches and guides us and that preserves us, Father, and that shows us your will and your word. Help us, Almighty Father, please, in the name of Jesus, to glorify you in everything that we say and do. Give us the righteous, we, righteous Father, we need, that we need to walk and the courage to stand for truth. To have the servant to know when to be gentle and a time to be strong. But Father God, we ask all this in Jesus' name so that you may be glorified in us more perfectly. As we, as we get closer each day to spend eternity with you, that will be done in our lives. Go ahead, Kelly. Gracious Father, we come to you in your Son's name of Jesus. We thank you for being our Lord 
our Savior, our Redeemer. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are our all in all. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you for meeting needs. Yes. We thank you for housing. We thank you for food, uh, bed to sleep in. Because, Lord, we do take all these things for granted. But, Lord, we give you the praise for it. We thank you for the many blessings you've given to us yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yes. We ask that all these all people that are here today, that they're all covered with the blood of the Lamb, with a wall of fire around them, with the warring angels at guard, that no evil will come to them, and they'll do no evil to their fellow man. We also ask that the true believers in the living Christ, according to the Bible, are all worthy to escape the tribulation. Amen. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You want to pray now, Liam? It's your turn. Thank you, God, for your son's blood, blood of the Lamb. And thank you for protecting us and guiding us and keeping us in your care. Amen. Thank you, my Lord Jesus, for another day of life here on this earth. I thank you for my family here, Lord, my family in Christ. I appreciate my love of your Lord, Lord. I thank you for my son. I thank you for my daughter and my family, Lord, and the place of you you've been in my life for many years. And the fellowship and love. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory that you so truly deserve. Thank you, my Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We can rejoice in this day and every day because you made these days for us. And we know that you know us personally. We just ask that you lead us and guide us. And we may serve you in all we say and do. And be thankful for your righteousness. Yes. And thankful for the time you've given us. We may use it wisely to serve you. We give you praise all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word in this book right here. Yes. Instructing us in the way to go and guiding us in our travels while we are here on this earth. And we pray that you direct us all in a straight path and that we all might enter into the narrow gate. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for being in our midst this day. Your word says, when two or more are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. And we thank you, Lord, that you've been gathering here with us. But we also thank you that in our studio audience that you've been gathered with them as well. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that the story of the pilgrims we are pilgrims this day. We are abolitionists this day. We are saints. We are disciples because that's what you called us to be. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us courage and strength to go on. We thank you that you lifted the blinders from our eyes that we may see the truth and reality that all that has taken place around us. We ask, dear Lord, that not just a day of thanksgiving, but a thanksgiving in our hearts and rejoicing daily Amen. to walk in your holiness and in your love. For none of us are worthy of your grace. None of us are worthy of your redemption. None of us are worthy of eternal life, but yet it came as a gift. The gift is a simple gift, but there's a lot of work beyond that gift that we need to work continuously doing. Lord, we thank you that you've given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven to help us stand strong against the dark kingdom that always works against us, that that dark kingdom is always trying to tear us down. But we thank you, Lord, that you gave us the victories to stand strong and above it. Yes. And with even all the garbage that's in our daily lives, we're not perfect. We still seek your wisdom, your love, your mercy, your grace, your discernment, your direction, your conviction, to know your full counsel and your sovereignty, for you are sovereign alone, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be 
a servant to your love, that we may serve you in gladness of heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks who will, we'll see you the first Saturday in September. And a great Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. September? I mean, December. December. <laughs> December. Oh, you're going backwards. <laughs> have a good week.